The learning goals of this video are to be able to interpret and understand different diagnostic testing parameters. To understand why clinical tests are used, let's look at an example. Let's think about a scenario in a family practice. A 50-year-old man consults his general practitioner due to breathing-dependent chest pain. The patient reported a previous history of deep vein thrombosis in the lower extremity. What is the most probable clinical diagnosis? If we consider pulmonary embolism as a likely diagnosis, which test should be performed? Why do we use diagnostic tests in clinical practice? They aid in clarifying the cause of symptoms and support therapeutic decisions. Tests are also used to assess disease severity and patient prognosis. In addition, they are used to assess the course of the disease and the body's response to therapy. Finally, they are used for disease screening. Examples of diagnostic tests in clinical practice include imaging, such as x-ray or ultrasound, or laboratory tests, such as blood or urine tests. In general, tests in clinical practice can be performed in parallel or sequentially. Sequentially means that the result of the first test informs the choice of the second test. However, before we talk more about tests, we should take a closer look at pretest probability. Pretest probability refers to the probability that a disease is present before a diagnostic test is performed. Pretest probability could be assessed based on history taking, a physical examination, or application of a validated risk score. Coming back to our example, to determine the pretest probability of pulmonary embolism, the WELLS score is a commonly used tool to assess a patient's risk of having a pulmonary embolism based on a number of clinical features. Several symptoms and risk factors are assigned points and added together. If the score is higher than four points, there is a high risk of having a pulmonary embolism. To diagnose pulmonary embolism, a D-dimer blood test measuring a small protein fragment resulting from degradation of blood clots or CT angiography are commonly used diagnostic tests. The GP decides to use the point-of-care D-dimer quick test directly in their office. But how accurate is such a test? How many cases of pulmonary embolism does it miss? How many false positive results does it render? To answer such questions, we use diagnostic parameters such as sensitivity, specificity, predictive values, and accuracy. These parameters are obtained via diagnostic studies. Diagnostic studies are conducted in a sample of patients. The test of interest is called the index test. The established gold standard is called the reference test. In a diagnostic test accuracy study, both tests should be performed on all of the patients in a blinded manner to be able to obtain diagnostic test parameters of the index test. The results can be presented in a 2x2 two two table showing the results from the index test horizontally and the results from the reference standard vertically. This results in two cells with the number of correct results, true positive, true negative, and two with the incorrect results, false positive, false negative. Based on data presented in a 2x2 two two table, we are able to calculate diagnostic test parameters. We will have a closer look at this in the following slides. First, let us have a look at sensitivity and specificity of diagnostic tests. These are commonly used in diagnostic studies. Sensitivity refers to the proportion of patients with a disease who were correctly identified by a test, the so-called true positive results. Using a 2x2 two two table, sensitivity is calculated as true positive cases divided by the sum of the true positive and false negative cases, or the overall patients who are sick. In our example, in a study assessing the D-dimer test, 43 out of 47 people were correctly diagnosed with pulmonary embolism through the D-dimer rapid test, resulting in a 91.5% sensitivity. From a clinical perspective, this means that a test with a high sensitivity detects most patients who have the disease. This means that tests with high sensitivity are very useful to rule out a disease. 
If such a test is negative, we can be sure that a patient does not have the suspected disease. Remember this mnemonic. Snout. Sensitivity rules out. On the other hand, specificity refers to the proportion of those who do not have the disease and have a negative test, the so-called true negative results. It is calculated with the number of true negative results divided by false positives and true negatives. For a rapid D-dimer test, 46 out of 73 patients were correctly diagnosed with not having a pulmonary embolism, leading to a 63% specificity. From a clinical perspective, this means that a test with a high specificity detects most patients who do not have the disease. This means that tests with a high specificity are very useful to rule in a disease. If such a test is negative, we can be very sure that the patient does have the suspected disease. Remember this anomic, SPIN. Specificity rules in. Next, let's look at predictive values. Predictive values are more important in clinical practice because they help us to understand how a positive or a negative test result should be interpreted. A positive predictive value describes the probability of the presence of a disease if the test is positive. A negative predictive value describes the probability of the absence of the disease if the test is negative. Positive predictive value assesses the question, how high is the probability that a patient with a positive test has the illness? It is calculated by taking the true positive cases divided by the sum of the true positive and false positive cases. Using the rapid D-dimer test again, 43 patients of a total of 73 D-dimer positive patients really had a pulmonary embolism. This results in a 61.4% probability of having a pulmonary embolism with a positive D-dimer. In other words, 6 out of 10 patients with a positive D-dimer test also had a pulmonary embolism. The negative predictive value addresses the question, how high is the probability that a patient with a negative test does not have the illness? It is calculated by taking the true negative cases divided by the sum of the false negative and true negative cases. Therefore, the probability of having no pulmonary embolism with a negative D-dimer is 92%. In other words, 9 out of 10 patients with a negative D-dimer test also did not have a pulmonary embolism. Another diagnostic test parameter is accuracy. It is defined as the percentage of correct test results out of all tests. Thus, it addresses the probability that a correct diagnosis will be made based on the result of the test. It is calculated by the sum of the true positive and true negative values divided by the sum of all values. In our example, the accuracy of the D-dimer test is 74.2%. In other words, 7 out of 10 patients with a suspected pulmonary embolism will receive a correct diagnosis with a D-dimer test. In summary, first think about the pretest probability before doing a test. Secondly, sensitivity and specificity have different implications. A highly sensitive test can be used to rule out the disease. You can remember it through the word snout. Whereas a highly specific disease can be used to rule in the disease. It can be remembered through the word spin. Back to our patient. The D-dimer test was negative. Because of the high sensitivity of the test, the doctor is quite confident that a pulmonary embolism can be ruled out. He is thinking of snout. The doctor then starts with other diagnostic tests to find the reason for the chest pain and the shortness of breath for the patient.